Hi, welcome to Mondays in the Psalter. I am Pastor Vandercook. So today we take a look uh, again, working our way through Psalm 119. Uh, we are looking at verses 73 through 80 under the Hebrew letter Yod. Uh, which is transliterated into English or translated into English as Y-O-D-H, so not Yoda like the character from Star Wars, but Yod, the Hebrew letter which more or less makes the sound of a Y. Uh, but anyway, here are those verses for our consideration for today. Your hands have made and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you shall see me and rejoice, because I have hoped in your word. I know, O Lord, that your just decrees are righteous, and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Let your steadfast love comfort me, according to your promise to your servant. Let your mercy come to me, that I may live, for your law is my delight. Let the insolent be put to shame, because they have wronged me with falsehood. As for me... I will meditate on your precepts. Let those who fear you turn to me, that they may know your testimonies. May my heart be blameless in your statutes, that I may not be put to shame. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. As we work through these verses, the first verse of this section, verse 73, Your hands have made and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Now, in a lot of places throughout Psalm 119, it's already talked as if the person that is praying the psalm is already doing God's will, is already doing the things that God's law uh, indicates that he should do. But this one here, it, it shades toward the other direction. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Here we're praying to continue to learn the commandments because while certainly there are times that we do good things, that we do the commandments, there are times that we are still learning what the commandments are. We're still learning what God's word uh, would have us do as his people. We're still learning to live according to God's will. So here the psalmist is praying for that, praying that he may have understanding uh, to learn the commandments better, to uh, become uh, more and more of a Christian, live more as a Christian as his life progresses uh, until the end. And then let's take 74 and 75 together. Those who fear you shall see me and rejoice, because I have hoped in your word. I know, O Lord, that your just decrees are righteous, and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. If you put those in reverse, you might, uh, it might make a little bit more sense there. It might make sense either way, I suppose. But if we look at verse 75 first, I know, O Lord, that your just decrees are righteous and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. If the outside world, those who fear God, see that you are being afflicted, they will not look at it as God hating you. They will not look at it as God pouring out his wrath upon you. Uh, but they will see that God's decrees are righteous and that in faithfulness you've been afflicted. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm getting at here is take a look at the saints. We revere the saints for their faithfulness, even though they suffered so much. And in much the same way, we can rejoice, actually, in the sufferings of others as well, that God uh, considers them uh, you know, th this is why martyrs would rejoice at the fact that they were suffering, because they said, look, we are, we are counted as God's saints, and we're suffering for our faith. This is a good thing. Uh, that's something that only somebody who has faith can actually see. People who do not have faith in God, who do not fear his word, who do not fear him, uh, who do not know his word, they cannot look at one who is suffering and see that, um, not that the suffering is good, but they can't see that as uh, righteous. They, they see that rather as something, a black mark, I suppose, against God. Uh, you know, consider Job uh, and his interaction with his friends. They tried to tell him, you know, surely, Job, you must have done something wrong. That's the only explanation for why you could be suffering in this way. Um, but that's not what it is. God tells us, Jesus himself says, that you will suffer many things uh, in his name. Being a Christian does not mean that things will always go well. And that's what this verse is acknowledging. And so 
those who fear God will see us and rejoice because our hope is not in the things of this world, but rather it is in the things of God. It is in Christ Jesus, the one who has come to take away our sin. And then I also want to look here at verse 79. Let those who fear you turn to me, that they may know your testimonies. Part of living as God's people is giving witness to what God has done for us in the way that we live, live our lives. And so when people look at us uh, and they have fear of God, we ought to be people who are uh, worthy of looking to, uh, you know, people that are above reproach, people that, are, uh, that live lives that are worthy of imitation. And that's what we're praying for here, is that uh, God would help us to learn more and more his commandments, that we may be uh, counted as his people, and that others who look to see what it is to be a Christian would be able to look at us and be able to see that that's what it is to be one who is a redeemed sinner, one who, whom Christ has died for, and one who lives a life of repentance. God's blessings to you this week. Uh, we'll see you next week on Mondays in the Psalter.